What is a CPU core? A CPU core is the actual worker inside your processor. Think of your CPU, the central processing unit, as the brain of your computer. Each core inside that brain is a separate thinking unit, capable of handling its own stream of instructions. In the earliest days, a CPU had only one core, which meant it could only focus on one thing at a time. When you opened multiple programs, the processor simply jumped between them so fast it gave the illusion of multitasking. But in reality, it was just time sharing one core across everything. As computers evolved, manufacturers realized that adding more cores to a single chip was far more efficient than cramming multiple CPUs onto a massive motherboard. Having multiple physical CPUs caused problems like high cost, heat, and something called latency, which is the small delay that happens when separate chips need to constantly communicate with each other. So engineers shrank everything down and put several cores into one processor package. That's why today even your laptop CPU might have four, six, or eight cores, all living inside one chip and working side by side. Each core is treated by the operating system as its own independent processing unit. If you're running four heavy applications at once, maybe Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Chrome, and Spotify, the system can assign one core to each, so they all process simultaneously without stepping on each other. This makes the system smoother, faster, and far more responsive under load. Of course, you'll often run more programs than cores, but we'll get to how that's handled later. Adding more cores changed how software is written, too. Old single-core software was like a one-lane road. Only one instruction could pass at a time. Modern multi-core software is a multi-lane highway. If it's properly designed, it can send work down multiple lanes at once, massively improving performance. That's the reason you'll see processors described as dual-core, quad-core, hexa-core, or octa-core, simply referring to how many physical cores they contain. But more lanes don't always mean faster travel. As we'll see later, the type of work being done and how efficiently those cores share it makes all the difference. How CPU Cores Work Each CPU core is a miniature processor inside the larger processor. It reads, interprets, and executes instructions, the small, logical steps that make up every computer task. When you launch a program, your operating system breaks that program into instructions, and sends them to a core to be processed in sequence. The faster a core can handle these instructions, the faster your program runs. Before multi-core processors existed, manufacturers experimented with adding multiple CPUs to a single motherboard to gain more power. This worked in theory, but failed in practice. The hardware was huge, expensive, and slow because of communication delays between separate CPUs. So instead, engineers found a smarter solution. Integrate multiple processing cores inside one physical CPU. Each core shares the same memory pool and cache system, drastically reducing those communication delays and allowing for true parallel work. To your operating system, each core looks like its own separate processor. If you have an 8-core CPU, your system sees 8 separate units ready to take on tasks. When you open several programs, for example, Adobe Photoshop, Microsoft Excel, a web browser, and your video editor, the CPU scheduler assigns each process to one or more available cores. If a program finishes or becomes idle, that core becomes available for another task almost instantly. This automatic juggling happens millions of times per second. Modern CPUs also include something called simultaneous multi-threading, often marketed as hyper-threading on Intel chips or SMT on AMD chips. This allows each physical core to split itself into two logical cores, or threads. Threads share some resources within the core, but can handle two instruction streams at once, like a single chef cooking two dishes simultaneously on the same stove. It's not twice as fast, but it increases efficiency when multiple light tasks run together. When too many programs are open and all cores and threads are busy, new tasks go into a queue. The CPU constantly checks this queue and moves tasks in and out of cores depending on priority. Essential system processes always get first pick, while background apps wait their turn. This scheduling system is why your computer rarely freezes even when overloaded. The CPU keeps rotating tasks fast enough that everything still feels alive, though slower. All these operations happen at incredible speed, synchronized by something called the clock speed. That's measured in gigahertz, billions of cycles per second. Each cycle allows the core to perform one or more instructions depending on the architecture. So, while having Having more cores helps you run more things at once. The speed of each core determines how fast each individual task completes. A balance between both defines real performance. What are CPU threads? A CPU thread is the virtual extension of a physical core, a way to let one core handle multiple tasks at once. If you think of each core as a worker, a thread is that worker's second pair of hands. It doesn't double the worker's strength, but it lets them switch between tasks faster and waste less time waiting for things like data or memory access. When you run a program, the the operating system divides it into smaller units called processes. Each process can contain one or more threads. These threads are like tiny job lists. 
small sets of instructions that can be processed independently. A modern CPU can assign each of these threads to different cores, or, if it runs out of physical cores, use simultaneous multi-threading to let one core juggle multiple threads. That's why you'll see specs like 6 cores and 12 threads. It means each of the 6 cores can manage two threads simultaneously. Without threads, a core could easily end up sitting idle while waiting for data from memory or storage. Threads solve this by letting the CPU switch between instruction streams instant when one thread is waiting, the other one uses the execution resources, keeping the core constantly busy and improving efficiency. However, threads are not equal to real cores. Each physical core has its own arithmetic units, caches, and pipelines, the hardware responsible for actual computation. Threads, on the other hand, share those same resources. This means you'll never get double the performance just because a core can handle two threads. It's more like getting a 20 to 30 percent improvement, depending on the workload. Threads matter most in software that can take advantage of parallel execution Video editors, 3D rendering engines, and scientific applications split large jobs into many smaller ones that can be processed at once. That's why you'll often see these workloads scale well across many threads. But tasks like web browsing, document editing, or even most games don't benefit much. They're limited by logic that must happen in strict sequence. You can think of it like running a restaurant kitchen. Each chef, core, can cook one dish at a time. Giving that chef a second pair of hands, a thread, helps them chop vegetables while the sauce simmers. They're there's still one chef, but more efficient. Add more chefs, and you can handle more dishes simultaneously, but only if the recipes themselves can be cooked in parallel. Parallel processing and multitasking. Parallel processing is what happens when a CPU divides work across multiple cores, so tasks can be executed at the same time instead of one after another. This concept is the foundation of why modern computers feel fast even when running dozens of things at once. Each core takes a portion of the total workload, processes it, and then combines the results into a single outcome, much faster than a single core trying to do everything sequentially. To understand this, imagine a simple calculation. You want to find the result of 5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2. A single core CPU would do one operation after the other. First, 5 times 4, then multiply multiply that result by 3, and finally by 2. A dual-core CPU could split the work. One core calculates 5 times 4, while the other does 3 times 2. Then both results are combined at the end. Because both halves ran simultaneously, the total time was cut nearly in half. That's the basic idea of parallelization, splitting a big job into smaller, independent parts that can be processed in parallel. However, not every task can be divided like this. Some software must process instructions in strict order, where step 2 depends on on the result of step 1. In those cases, adding more cores doesn't make it faster. That's why even expensive CPUs with 16 or 32 cores won't magically boost performance in all programs. The speedup depends entirely on how well the software can break its tasks into parallel pieces. Games are a good example. While the graphics rendering itself is highly parallel and mostly handled by the graphics processing unit, many game mechanics such as artificial intelligence, physics, and input response rely on sequential logic. They must happen in a fixed order and can't easily be split across multiple cores. As a result, most games benefit more from faster cores than from more cores. That's why a 6-core CPU with high clock speeds often performs just as well as a 12-core CPU in gaming. On the other hand, tasks like video rendering, 3D modeling, and scientific simulations are designed to take advantage of multiple cores and threads. They divide their workload into thousands of smaller operations that can all run at the same time. The more cores you have, the faster they complete, which is why professional workstations and servers servers often use CPUs with 32, 64, or even more cores. Parallel processing also happens at the system level. When you open multiple programs, a browser, a word processor, and a music app, your operating system assigns them to different cores, keeping them responsive at the same time. Even when one app freezes, the others continue running smoothly because they're not sharing the same execution lane. In short, parallel processing is the art of using many cores to make the impossible, doing many things at once, actually possible. But it only works when the software knows how to cooperate. Clock speed versus core count. When it comes to CPU performance, people often assume that more cores automatically mean more speed. That's not entirely true. Core count determines how many tasks can be processed at the same time, but clock speed determines how fast each task runs. Both matter, but in different ways. Clock speed is measured in gigahertz, meaning billions of cycles per second. Each cycle is an opportunity for the CPU to execute one or more instructions. So, a 5 gigahertz processor performs 5 billion cycles every second. The higher 
the clock speed, the faster each individual core can handle instructions. However, a higher clock also means more power consumption and more heat, which limits how far manufacturers can push it. Let's make it concrete. Imagine two CPUs, one with four cores running at 5 GHz, and another with eight cores running at 3 GHz. For single-threaded workloads, like most games or light productivity apps, the four-core, 5 GHz processor will often win. It finishes each instruction faster, even though it has fewer cores. But for heavy workloads like 3D rendering or video encoding, where the job can be split across many threads, the eight-core CPU takes the lead. More workers running slightly slower still outperform fewer workers running faster, as long as the work can be shared evenly. The ideal CPU depends entirely on what you do most. Gamers, for example, should prioritize high clock speeds and strong single-core performance, because games rarely use more than six cores efficiently. Video editors, animators, and developers benefit more from higher core counts, since their software can parallelize many tasks. There's another subtle factor called instructions per cycle, or IPC. This measures how much work a CPU can complete in a single clock cycle. A newer architecture with higher IPC can outperform an older one even at lower clock speeds. That's why a modern 6-core CPU running at 3.8 GHz can beat an older 8-core CPU running at 4.2. It's not just about the numbers printed on the box, it's about how much useful work each cycle accomplishes. In reality, the best CPUs find a balance. Enough cores to handle multitasking in modern software, and enough clock speed to keep single-threaded tasks fast. That's why manufacturers like AMD and Intel often advertise both numbers, because one without the other doesn't tell the full story. Why more cores doesn't always mean better performance. Adding more cores sounds like the easiest way to make a computer faster, but in practice, it isn't that simple. Cores only help when your software knows how to use them. If the program isn't written to split its workload across multiple cores, then all those extra cores just sit there waiting for something to do. Let's say you have a 16-core processor, but you're running an application that was designed when dual-core CPUs were still the norm. That program can only send instructions to one or two cores at a time, leaving the remaining 14 almost idle. The result? You paid for a lot of silicon that's just taking a nap. This is why many high-core count processors don't automatically outperform mid-range ones. The benefit depends on parallelization, how well a task can be divided into smaller independent parts. Video encoding, rendering, and large-scale data processing can be parallelized easily. They scale almost linearly with each additional core. But most daily computing tasks, browsing, editing documents, streaming, even gaming, depend on sequential operations. They can't be split up effectively, so a faster core beats a higher core count almost every time. There's also the issue of shared resources. Even though each core has its own execution units, they share certain internal components like the memory controller, L3 cache, and bus connections. When too many cores fight over the same resources, performance can actually dip because of communication overhead. At that point, adding more cores gives you diminishing returns, like adding more chefs to a tiny kitchen where everyone keeps bumping into each other. Another factor is thermal and power limits. More cores mean more transistors and more heat. To stay within safe power limits, CPUs automatically reduce their clock speeds when all cores are active. That's why a processor might advertise 5 GHz boost speed, but only reach that with one or two cores running, not all 16. When the entire chip is working, heat forces it to slow down to prevent damage. So, beyond a certain point, additional cores don't just not help, they can actually make sustained performance worse. Software developers are gradually improving multi-core support, but progress is slow. Many engines, tools, and even operating systems still rely heavily on single-threaded performance for key tasks. Until parallel programming becomes universal, having the fastest individual cores will often matter more than having the most. So yes, more cores can mean better performance, but only when the job can be divided efficiently, the thermal design can handle the load, and the software where knows how to cooperate. Otherwise, it's like owning a bus with 30 seats. Impressive, but pointless when you're the only passenger. How many cores do you actually need? The number of cores you need depends entirely on what kind of work you do, not on how impressive the spec sheet looks. Different workloads scale differently, and throwing more cores at the wrong task won't buy you any extra speed. For everyday users, people who browse, stream, use office apps, and run light photo editors, four to six cores are more than enough. Modern CPUs with that count can easily juggle dozens of background tasks, system services, and browser tabs without breaking a sweat. Adding more won't make Netflix load faster or improve how word processes text. Those are light, single-threaded operations. For gamers, six to eight cores is the current sweet spot. Most modern game engines can efficiently use up to six cores, sometimes eight if well-optimized. Beyond that, performance gains are minimal because most of a game 
game's heavy lifting. Physics, artificial intelligence, and frame rendering depends on sequential logic or is offloaded to the graphics processing unit. A high clock speed and strong single core performance matter far more than having 10 or 12 cores sitting idle between frames. For video editors, 3D artists, and developers, the equation changes. Rendering, compiling, and simulation workloads can be split perfectly across many cores. Here, 12 to 16 cores, or even higher in workstation class processors, can drastically shorten render times and improve responsiveness during heavy multitasking. The same applies to scientific simulations, virtualization, and machine learning tasks, which are all designed for parallel execution. If you're building a server, a dedicated workstation, or a virtual machine host, core count becomes even more valuable. Each virtual instance or background process can run on its own physical core, allowing massive workloads to operate simultaneously without contention. That's why server CPUs like AMD Epyx or Intel Xeon reach 32, 64, or even 96 cores. They're built for non-stop parallel operations, not for gaming or light desktop use. Laptop users face another balance. More cores mean more power draw and heat. If portability and battery life matter more than raw speed, a 6-core processor with efficient power management will outperform a 12-core chip that constantly throttles under thermal limits. In short, buy for your real usage, not theoretical benchmarks. A simple rule of thumb, 4 to 6 cores, basic users and students, 6 to 8 cores, gamers and creators who multitask, 12 plus cores, professionals working with demanding parallel workloads. More cores only matter if your tasks can actually use them. Otherwise, you're just paying extra for silicon that spends most of its time doing nothing, quietly admiring itself in Task Manager. The evolution of CPU cores. The journey from single core to multi-core processors is one of the most dramatic leaps in modern computing. In the early decades of personal computers, every CPU was a single core design. That single core handled every instruction, from opening a document to rendering graphics, one step at a time. The only way to get more performance was to increase the clock speed, simply make the core run faster. And for a while, that worked. Through the 1980s and 1990s, clock speeds skyrocketed from a few megahertz to several gigahertz, delivering huge performance gains year after year. But by the early 2000s, engineers hit a wall. Raising clock speeds further caused heat to spiral out of control. Chips were consuming too much power and running dangerously hot. Manufacturers like Intel and AMD realized they couldn't keep pushing frequency forever. They needed a smarter way to keep improving performance without melting laptops. That solution was the multi-core architecture. Instead of making one core endlessly faster, why not add another core that can share the workload? The idea was simple. If one core can process one instruction stream, two can process two, four can process four, and so on. It allowed CPUs to perform true parallel processing without increasing heat exponentially. The first mainstream dual-core processors arrived around 2005. Intel released the Pentium D, and AMD followed with the Athlon 64X2. At the time, most software wasn't built to take advantage of multiple cores, so the benefits were modest, but the potential was clear. As developers adapted, operating systems evolved to distribute workloads more evenly across cores, making multitasking smoother and rendering faster. From there, core counts kept climbing. Quad-core CPUs became standard in desktops by the late 2000s. Six- and eight-core processors soon entered high-end systems. By the 2010s, mobile CPUs and smartphones started adopting multi-core designs too. Even budget devices now come with six or eight cores. And in the professional space, CPUs like AMD's Ryzen Threadripper and Epic series pushed limits to 64 and beyond, giving workstations server-level muscle. This evolution wasn't just about hardware. It forced software to evolve too. Developers learned to design programs that could run multiple threads efficiently, breaking large problems into smaller, parallel ones. Video editing, compression, data analysis, and gaming engines all benefited massively from this shift. Today, multi-core CPUs are everywhere, not just in desktops and laptops, but in phones, tablets, cars, and even household appliances. It's the quiet backbone of modern computing allowing every digital task you perform to happen faster, smoother, and often invisibly in parallel. What began as a workaround for heat limits became one of the greatest engineering revolutions in technology. And as chips continue to shrink and efficiency improves, core counts will keep rising. Though as we've learned, raw numbers only matter if the software keeps up. There's a great video on the screen now. Don't miss it.